not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous this morning. I just pulled in here to my midwife appointment and it's actually my first midwife appointment this pregnancy. Obviously I had the ultrasound, but just with our trip and then my midwife was on vacation for a little bit and so that's just how it's worked out. So that's what's up first this morning. Pray it goes well. Everything looks good. That is so exciting. I have my gender, like, the ultrasound and anatomy scan scheduled. Great way to start the day. Pardon my dirty dash, y'all. Anyways, we were planning to start school today, but it, last week was so crazy trying to get everything ready for baptism, and then yesterday, obviously, we had all these people there, which was so sweet, but I'm just feeling a little bit like if we tried to start school today, especially because I had this appointment in the morning, we have another appointment in the afternoon, and I feel like that's not how I want to start the school year. Instead, I think we're going to spend today, I need to do laundry and some household things like that. I also want to just make sure that we have everything ready for like a solid start to the school year. And one thing that I want to incorporate this year that we haven't done very religiously <laughs> so far, and that is to incorporate a story time slash reading time in our morning, which I think will be really special for the kids. I haven't told them about it yet, but I think they're going to love it. So in light of that, I would love to just have some good snacks on hand that go well with our tea time. So I was looking at some recipes earlier and I think I'm going to make some sourdough scones because I thought how fun for, you know, tea time. had time to have a little school meeting. I feel like we've just been so busy the past few weeks and so it was really nice to be able to sit down and just kind of get a game plan for the school year. But I am still trying to eat really high protein even now into the second trimester. So I thought that since this is kind of a brunch lunch, <laughs> we're gonna make some omelets with some fresh veggies. The kids picked some peppers and tomatoes in the garden for me. So I wanna saute those and make omelets with them. And then I also have bacon in the oven, which I love using the bacon fat to fry the omelets in. So that's on the menu for lunch. And I am just like drooling over this. I'm so incredibly hungry.
Okay, so here's our bagel inside and then I have a bit of bacon and this is actually a potato salad that I had made yesterday. Doesn't have any mayo in it. I can link the recipe down below, but it's basically avocado oil and then a bunch of herbs. Actually tastes really good. I cannot believe that this is where we're at. <laughs> the kids brought me these leaves and look at all those colors. Okay, we're finally back in the kitchen. The afternoon has not gone quite like I expected. I forgot that Josh and I had a meeting with a banker today. And so anyhow, that went longer than I was expecting. And then with all the hubbub of the last number of weeks, I've just been like, oh, just let me take a break and rest. So that's what I did. But I am going to try to whip up these scones yet so that we have them for our little tea time tomorrow. I have the recipe printed off here. It, I can link it down below. It's from Little Spoon Farm. It was highly rated, so I thought, you know what? We're gonna give it a try. I don't know if I've made sourdough scones before. So we'll see how they turn out. Sourdough chocolate chip scones. So I think that the kids are going to love that. And if you have any ideas for like healthier snacks, obviously we don't just eat fruits and veggies and you know, those things, but I love not just having a ton of sweets. So if you have any like healthier snacks or easy like lunches, let me know in the comments below because I could use that with getting back into the swing of things for school. I mean, some of them are a little bit misshaped, but otherwise they look great. However, my first tray here that I did is very dark, like this. So I would still totally eat this. I, maybe the very tip tastes a little burnt. Otherwise it's just like, almost like biscotti. So I'm gonna still keep those, but these definitely look more like they're supposed to. I had already baked my first batch 18 minutes instead of the 20 to 25 that it says. These were only in there for 14 minutes and turned out much better. So anyway, if you make this recipe, you might wanna check on them earlier than what the recipe calls for. But I feel like we should give these a little taste test. Mmm, that's hot. That is delicious. I feel like I can taste 
a tiny bit of the tang of the sourdough and then with the chocolate it's just a really nice almost like that sweet and salty blend not actually salty but you know what I mean kind of tangy that will be delicious with a cup of tea pig on the loose <laughs> Hey, I don't have anything for you. Go over to Hudson. Now you have to walk. Once it knows what it is, walk to the pig pen. Okay, I have to show this to you before I take it off. We just got finished taking pictures of the girls and I in these coats. I will insert one right here. But I love this one for fall very fall in my opinion this is like one of my favorite kind of coat for I don't know I just feel like it instantly dresses you up whether you're wearing a little black dress and booties like I was in this picture or even like jeans or a denim skirt with a t-shirt but just throwing on this like blazer type jacket really elevates an outfit immediately it is the next day now the kids have st are started on school we are enjoying our first day of school for the school year and I'm so excited sometime soon I want to take you more on like a an actual school how we're doing it this year but I thought maybe not the first day of school while we're still trying to figure it out so I'll give you a couple of clips of what we're doing but that's what we're busy with this morning and we are all so excited <laughs> fun start to the school year today was such a success and you know there's kind of bumps in the road a little bit of learning as you get started in a new school year but I completely revamped our school schedule and I cannot wait to share more of that with you here in the near future I want to try it for a little while first just to make sure that it's solid that we are actually loving it in the long run but today was such a success and I just cannot stop thinking about how grateful I am of like what a complete turnaround our homeschool has done like I used to just dread it and drag along and now we all legit love it so anyways that is a really good feeling and I'm excited for the school year but I'm sitting down with my cup of tea now <laughs> And I'm actually drinking rooibos tea with vanilla and whole milk and it's delicious. I love this hot or like over ice, cold, whatever. I'm usually an like only drinks water girl, <laughs> but I do love this. It's probably my favorite drink. And a little disclaimer, I will be talking about pregnancy, specifically early pregnancy. So if that is triggering to anyone, I know there's so many that have dealt with loss or are trying to get pregnant and can't, things like that. If this is triggering to you, I have this video timestamped, so feel free to just jump ahead and skip this 
portion entirely. But a lot of you have been asking specifically about my pregnancy diet and what in the world I did that helped my nausea so much. So first up, I will say, I mean, I have prayed and prayed that it wouldn't be so bad this time. Well, no, I think I was actually praying I wouldn't have any morning sickness this time. That was not the case. I felt it come on right around six weeks, which is kind of like, I think it's been at six weeks before, but it's also happened as early as three weeks pregnant and just hit hard and gone strong. The longest I've had it is till 17 weeks. So usually between like 13 to 17 weeks is where it kind of starts to fade away. And that seems to be true again this time. I've still like even, even today, part of the day I was feeling nauseous. So we're at 16 weeks now. So it's kind of, I think at that point where it's kind of working its way out. But if you are new here in my last pregnancy, I got severely sick, I think is the right way to call it. I believe I had hyperemesis gravidarium, which some of you might be familiar with, but it's basically just an extreme case of morning sickness. Now, a lot of women have to be hospitalized if they have this because they just cannot keep anything down. I have not been able to throw up since I was like 10, no matter how bad of a stomach bug I have or how sick I am on the couch. I often wish I could just throw up for that relief, but I have not been able to. So I guess in this case, it's a blessing that I've been able to stay home, but I remember just like literally rolling around on the couch, not knowing what to do with myself day after day because of just such extreme nausea. So anyway, my last pregnancy, I literally could not walk up the stairs, hold a decent conversation. Like all those things just made me just wanna gag and gag and gag and couldn't stop. So anyway, it was pretty rough and I developed PTSD from that pregnancy. It was a really, really hard time. So needless to say, I was a little terrified this time, along with excited, of course, for this pregnancy and just you know, I had been praying that I wouldn't be sick at all this time, but I've just been thinking a lot of sometimes, like, I think God wants us to climb that mountain, and I was willing to try whatever to manage it better this time, so I think that's why I was in a state to better accept this advice that I was given. I have a different midwife now than I ever had before. She actually delivered Avi, my youngest, but uh, the first time I ever met her was when she walked in for the delivery. So I think I was seven, eight centimeters at the time. So didn't get to know her really well then. She was my current midwife's backup, but I'm seeing her this time. And till now, every like doctor, midwife, anybody I've seen always says, first trimester, just eat what you can. Like anything that you can keep down, just eat and we'll worry about nutrition and stuff later. And so I remember just downing crackers previously and this time, this midwife, she's like, no, I want you to like cut out carbs, cut out sugar, and just really focus on eating a lot of protein. And I'm like, oh, the last thing I wanna think about is meat, is eggs, like all these things just, mm. but I just had to be real with myself and I was like, okay, Steph, well, you have a choice. Are you going to try this or are you going to just decide you can't and redo what happened last time? And so I decided it was worth a try. I would say it took a week, maybe two weeks till I noticed a difference. And looking back, that's basically what I ate. Like I did not want veggies even. I'm usually a big veggie lover. Like I just didn't want to eat anything, right? But I would make myself eat protein, whatever source that was, whether it was some form of meat, cheese, cottage cheese, eggs, protein shakes, like whatever it was, but something that was low sugar, low carb, and high protein. After about a week or two, I noticed that, wow, this really seems to help and just blown away. And a little tip I would say, if you are feeling extremely nauseous, now again, I don't know how this would go if you actually throw up, but I'd say it's very worth a try because at the same time you're also nourishing that precious baby with all the protein but I realize that it's just not always possible when you feel so sick so but 
Since mentioning it, I've had a number of people that reached out and said, yes, same thing for them. And so apparently it does work for at least a good handful of people. So anyways, that's basically what I did. And I would say that if like eggs really grossed me out, but I realized after a bit it was specifically scrambled eggs that grossed me out and I was okay with hard boiled eggs. So like playing around with textures or like ways that you eat things or things that you eat with that. I craved sour and so I would just dump sauerkraut on top of my eggs or whatever I was eating to completely mask the flavor of the actual food I was trying to consume. So some tips like that that really helped me out. I would also say taking vitamin B6. Now I had tried this previously and was like, doesn't work. But this time I, again, I guess I kind of took those two things together and decided to give it at least a week or two because again, I was like, I'm at the end of my rope if these things don't work. So I felt like they were worth a good try. Taking vitamin B6 three times a day, I think it's every, is it six hours or eight hours? I would take it like morning, morning, afternoon, and evening. And that did, it definitely, like all these things, I was not morning sick free. Like I still spent time on the couch every single day. Some days were almost completely on the couch but for me, coming from where I had been in previous pregnancies, it was a very obvious difference. And when we went to visit my family a couple weeks ago, they could not, especially my mom, she knows how hard my pregnancies have been and she just kept saying, I can't believe how healthy you look this time. And I think that's largely just because for one, I was getting some sort of nutrients in eating higher protein foods. But for two, I was also not just like, you know, writhing around on the couch. I was able to walk around. It's just been a night and day difference. So anyways, those are the main things. Staying super hydrated also helps. And there is no shame in like needing to take a nap or like taking it a lot easier. I think you should take the best care of yourself that you can. I'm currently working on my plan for the second trimester and at this point I'm so grateful that I had all that protein. I feel like it set a good baseline as far as things I'm hungrier for now. You know when you like cut back on sugar and carbs a lot, you just crave them a lot less and I normally have a very strong sweet tooth. So that was pretty big for me I think in just craving healthier things. For me, the second trimester is not so much about the morning sickness usually. I'm expecting that to be completely gone within a week or two, if it's anything like previous times at least. And more the hernia seems to be coming back. So that's disappointing. Get over the disappointment of it. Like it's okay to grieve how you thought this pregnancy could be. And rather like I'm so grateful that I have a healthy baby inside of me and what do I need to do? Like. I'm willing to be extreme as long as it does not endanger the baby or myself. And so anyway, just really digging into that right now and seeing if there's anything that I could do to help that through the second and third trimesters. So anyway, it's looking like that could involve some dietary strictness again, <laughs> shall we say, but uh, I don't have that figured out enough yet to talk on it. So anyway, if any of you are going through extreme morning sickness or anything like that right now, then I just want you to know you're not alone. I have been there and I know what it feels like and just be gracious with yourself because you'll get to the other side. So I hope that answers your questions. If it did not, then just let me know in the comments and I will try to answer what I can there.